he has made it a life principle always to do things better than they have been done before. So wrote a contemporary of Henry Leland, some 40 years before Leland built the first Lincoln, 40 years before he would apply a passion for engineering. Leland's stubborn commitment to absolute precision was the tool that would help him teach the fledgling auto industry exactly what a luxury car should be. And it was the prize that led Henry Ford to purchase Leland's newly formed Lincoln Motor Company. He then went on to summon some of the world's great coach builders to Detroit, hoping to motivate them in their styling efforts for Lincoln. He remarked, while my father made the most popular car in the world, I want to build the best car in the world. These very words have motivated generations of designers and engineers ever since. Under the leadership of Ford, Lincoln grew in scope and stature, and that early dedication to the art of building fine automobiles was preserved and nourished. Every Lincoln for example was shipped in its own individual paper bag and sealed in a dust-free railroad car. Henry Leland, a former manager of the Cadillac division of General Motors, and his son, Wilfred Leland, formed the Lincoln Motor Company in August, 1917. Leland named the new company after Abraham Lincoln, his hero, and for whom he cast a vote in 1864. Lincoln's first source of revenue came from assembling Liberty aircraft engines, using cylinders supplied by Ford Motor Company, to fulfill World War I government contracts. After the war, the Lincoln factories were retooled to manufacture luxury automobiles. Ford Motor Company purchased the Lincoln Motor Company in 1922, but Lincoln continued to operate as a somewhat separate company from Ford through early 1940. On April 30, 1940 the Lincoln Motor Company became the Lincoln division of Ford Motor Company at the direction of Henry's son Edsel. In 1923 several body styles were introduced, that included two and three window, four-door sedans and a phaeton that accommodated four passengers. Edsel Ford was a man of exquisite taste and artistic inclination. Qualities that he brought to the manufacture and styling of automobiles. To him, the automobile was an art flow, and Lincoln after Lincoln reflected that philosophy. His influence ensured that Lincolns were recognizable and distinctive in the powerful imagery of their tall nickel-plated radiator shells in their striking greyhound hood ornaments. Early cars for example featured numerous refinements including glass partitions and special golf club compartments. In the 1930s, an era that marked the extinction of many luxury marks, Lincoln continued to build its own unique heritage. Its flagship was the magnificent K-Series born in 1931, it featured some of the most spectacular cars the world had ever seen and some of the most advanced engineering the world too had ever seen, including the V12 engine, aluminum cylinder heads, power brakes. In celebration of the K-Series' first birthday, the KB was chosen as pace car for the 1932 Indy 500. The K would soon prove as durable as it was beautiful and innovative, in fact, some K-Series V12 engines were driven for over 300,000 miles without replacement of the bearings or turning the crankshaft. Design was a Lincoln hallmark, so in 1933 Edsel Ford established a new styling department and two years later, the Zephyr was ready for introduction. It was revolutionary, a true design breakthrough. It was the first successful production fastback, and its aerodynamic styling featured streamlined fenders. In addition, the Zephyr introduced the one-piece windshield and featured a powerful lightweight V12 engine. Among the Zephyr driving families was that of Edsel Ford. Unlike the Chrysler Airflow which failed in the marketplace, the Zephyr was a commercial success and an artistic success. It was honored in 1951 by the Museum of Modern Art as the first successfully designed streamlined car in America. A custom body version of the Zephyr called Town Car featured a large elegantly appointed passenger cabin and formal roofline. This car may well have been designed to please Mrs. Edsel Ford and to accommodate the stylish large bonnets of the period. But the most celebrated product of Edsel's aesthetic genius was the Lincoln Continental. Upon returning from Europe in 1938, he asked his styling department to create a car that would reflect the elegance and style of Europe in an American way. Edsel personally oversaw the development. 
The first prototype was delivered to Edsel and Hobe Sound, Florida in 1939, and this was so well received that Edsel returned with 200 blank check orders. The car was immediately put into production. The Continental was a masterwork of automotive styling, a symphony of gracefully arcing curves. Each Continental was essentially handmade, the 1941 model featured a safety innovation, turn indicators. Edsel Ford's death in 1943 marked the end of an automotive age, his genius and refined taste had inspired some of the most beautiful, most innovative automobiles that the world had ever known. In 1945, Henry Ford II, Edsel's oldest son became president of the Ford Motor Company. Henry vowed that his father's favorite automobile would continue to distinguish itself as the company's flagship brand. In 1949, Benson Ford became the general manager of the Lincoln Mercury division, he soon helped revive one important element of the Lincoln luxury image, performance. An all-new V8 engine introduced in 1952 enabled Lincoln to dominate the 2,000-mile Panam race in 52, 53, and 54. Nineteen fifty five saw the introduction of yet another Lincoln destined for classic designation, the Mark II, another satisfying artful design. Like the Continental, the Mark II was produced in limited quantity, however, its influence and impact were major, its styling was elegant and unique, avoiding, as the original Continental did, the design excesses of temporary fashion. The 1956 Lincoln Premier, a more popularly priced luxury automobile, won the Industry Design Institute's Award of Excellence. Safety received major emphasis in 1956, as Lincolns were offered with energy-absorbing steering columns, and recessed center steering wheels and seatbelt use was encouraged. In 1957, a new assembly plant opened at Wixom, Michigan. Since its first day on the line, the plant has built only Lincolns, thus it has been able to devote vast resources to the upholding of Lincoln's Motor Company's original mandate of absolute precision, year after year every year since. In 1961, a new Continental again distinguished Lincoln from the rest of the automotive world. Tasteful and understated, the 1961 Continental so distanced itself from the garish and gaudy luxury cars of its day. Through the then chief engineer Harold MacDonald, Lincoln's dedication to manufacturing precision and quality control was refocused on, bodies for example were immersed in rust-proofing primer paint and all cars were driven a 12-mile road test before delivery to dealers. The Continental was a major sales success and continued virtually unchanged until 1970. In 1968, the Mark III exploded on the luxury scene, combining subtle classical references with a crisply fresh design. It projected powerful imagery of prestige and great worth within months. Its bold square grille and continental hump came to signify the best that Detroit had to offer. The decade of the 70s saw Lincoln build on the formal styling precedent that the Mark III had established, the rounder sleeker Mark IV replaced the Mark III, and immediately outsold its luxury coupe competition. Lincoln began the very successful designer series in 1976, and in 1979, the collector edition sold out in a matter of months. The 1980s brought about major changes not only at Lincoln but in the automotive business as a whole, in response to the need for increased fuel economy. This saw Lincoln introduce in 1980, the first completely new Continental in a decade. It featured an efficient 5-liter V8, and the industry's first four-speed automatic overdrive transmission. Big Bold and Brawny, a 1984 Mark VII muscled its way to the head of the personal luxury car market. Yet the most notable styling achievement of the 1980s belongs once again to the Continental nameplate taking cues from the original Continental, some would call it the most beautiful Lincoln ever built. The contemporary transformation of the Lincoln model line was completed with the launch of the 1990 town car. A car whose aesthetic and functional roots can be traced at least to the town car of 1940. In this latest town car, Lincoln designers and engineers were able to incorporate the aerodynamic purity and sleek styling of recent Lincoln products, the automobile was recognized as Motor Trend Magazine's 1990 car of the year, making it the first luxury sedan in 38 years to win that award. 
Today, Lincoln stands at the pinnacle of the automotive world and Lincoln automobiles are more desired than ever before, exactly what Edsel Ford had in mind when he trotted Lincoln's course many years ago, I want to build the best car in the world. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe. Amema, and I will see you on the next one.